Hello and welcome to How to Be a Money Magpie, the podcast from moneymagpie.com, sponsored by the pension provider PensionBee. I'm Jasmine Bertles, the founder of Money Magpie, and this podcast series looks at all aspects of money, from freebies to investing and from holiday tips to ways to set up a business on the side. But today we're looking at pensions, in particular the state pension, because as you know, there are two basic types of pension. There's the state pension, and then there's the private and company pensions. Quite different things, but of course we get them for different reasons, and there's a lot of confusion about them and about how you get them, what you're entitled to, all of that. So I've got a couple of experts to help me with this to, to really work out what is the state pension and how do you get the most from it? And I've got Helen Thomas, who's CEO of macroeconomic consultancy Blonde Money. And I also have Cherry Raynard, who's a freelance financial journalist. Hello, both of you. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. So let's start with a big one. Helen, tell me, how does the state pension actually work? I have struggled to know all the details of this. So straight off, all of your listeners and viewers should know this stuff does look a bit complicated and messy. So, you know, it's not as if everybody understands this and you don't know, it is quite complicated. But very broadly speaking, you know, the state pension um, is paid out based on national insurance contributions for a period of qualifying years. And then you get a, a certain amount, about 170 pounds, isn't it? Um, but that, it, that in itself will change a little bit depending on these qualifying years. So, and at the moment, again, can be a bit different, but it's, it's 67 years old is when um, this, uh, you become eligible to draw this, uh, this pension. That is the very big picture. It's more detailed than that. I'm sure we're gonna go into it, but uh, that's a very broad overview to start with. So you, you're saying about paying national insurance contributions, and it is it is tricky because, as you say, the sort of different levels of years that you should pay. I mean, if you want to get the full pension, how many years of national insurance contributions do you have to make? Uh, yeah, 35 years, which uh, it doesn't have to be consecutive, which I think, you know, is something quite important, um, depending on you may have had periods uh, where you weren't working or your income was very low or you were self-employed. All of these situations can lead um, to a year where there weren't many contributions, but 35 years contributions should get you the full amount. Yeah, it's a good point about um, time off because, Cherry, you know, there, there are people, I mean, let's face it, mostly women um, who take time out from work to raise their kids or look after a relative, so they can't work. So what do they do? Well, I mean, it's worth saying you, you need to rack up 35 to get the full pension but if as long as you have at least 10 years of national insurance contributions you'll get something um now there there are real complexities here because if you take time out for you know a period for childcare or uh looking after an elderly relative or, or those kind of things or for any other reason um you might not be making those national insurance contributions now the state sort of appreciates that um so you'll generally get it through your child benefit or your carer's allowance or other things like that so you'll you'll get those national insurance automatically but there are complexities if let's go for the traditional scenario if your husband earns over fifty thousand pounds a year um, and therefore you're not getting child benefit then you might not be backing up contributions and that's the sort of thing where you really need to be aware of it and you really need to tackle it. OK, so so if you are, as you say, let's let's take the traditional thing. You're you're a woman, you've had a baby, you're off work for, let's say, two or three years or something. And your husband earns more than 50,000. You just you're going to have to phone the DWP, I'm guessing, you know, and, and say, what, what what do I have to do? What is, is this being paid for um, or do I have to pay this myself? And it's actually incredibly easy to check. All you need is your national insurance number. But it is really worth doing that mm -hmm. before it's too late because you can make you can make contributions and you can make up the difference if you've got big gaps in your uh, sort of your national insurance contributions. But 
it's much easier to do it when you're 45 than when you're 60. Yeah, it's it's true because um, you can go onto gov.uk and you just see how how much how many years have I paid? There's a there's a calculator there. And Helen, are there any other ways that you can get your national insurance contributions paid for you? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, for example, if if you're unemployed for a few years, um, I'm assuming that your national insurance contributions are paid for you for those years. You may be racking up these credits by virtue of receiving other benefits, such as the child benefit or unemployment benefit. Or um, if you're self-employed, you can and indeed should be um, making, I think it's class two national insurance contributions, um, or you can make voluntary national insurance contributions. And actually, although that might sound, and I thought when I first read that, God, that sounds a bit weird. You know, why would I voluntarily be, you know, giving money out maybe as well it might be at a period where you're a bit worried about about money um, uh, the numbers here are, are class three contributions voluntary national insurance contributions the rates for 2021-22 are 15 pounds 40 a week so that means you could do a one-off annual 800 pounds and 80 pence um, which would then be the voluntary contribution for, for a full year obviously I mean you know it's a lump of money um, it's it's a guarantee at the end of the process that you're really going to be making sure you know you're getting what you should be getting and and so you can actually buy back can't you if you so if you go onto this calculator and you find oh I've only paid for I don't know, 28 years um, and I've got holes I've got a few years you can actually buy some of those back so I'm assuming that's what the uh, the voluntary contributions is about isn't it that's my understanding, yeah. but yeah, yeah. I mean, one, one thing we should probably say, uh, Jasmine, as I'm, you may well be about to, is that, of course, the problem is governments keep tinkering with these rules. This video podcast can last forever, but, uh, in, you know, with the caveat, goodness knows what a government might be doing in the future and why they might tinker with things. And there was a big shift in, in I think it was 2016, um, which does again make things slightly more complicated, particularly if you're of a certain age where some of your eligibility was prior to that period and then afterwards. But I think what's important there is, as, as, as I think Cherry and Jasmine have been trying to highlight, is get online, make sure you know, um, you know, so that if there's a change, you're ready. Yeah, very good point. And I agree, they are constantly tinkering. And in fact, you know, this brings me to my next point, which is, uh, you know, okay, we've, we've talked about putting enough money into national insurance contributions so that you get a state pension. Then the question is, when you actually come to draw the state pension, there are, there are all sorts of, sort of questions around that, uh, not least uh, among which is what, what age are you going to be? Because they're, they're moving that age back. It, it has been 65, I think it's 66 at the moment, and then very quickly it'll be 67, um, as, as you mentioned, Hen Helen, when we actually draw your state pension. So, uh, Cherry, there's a Again, isn't there a calculator on gov.uk that will show you when you actually are allowed to draw your state pension? Because you have to ask for it, don't you? It's not automatic. Yes, I believe so. And um, and yes, sorry, there is a calculator online that will give you your exact state pension aid, though I have to say it, it is a movable fee. I mean, and another point is that you can defer your, your state pension and get a higher amount. Though actually, to be honest, by 68, you're, you're probably ready to retire. But, you know, if, if, if you're sort of retiring gently, so mm. you could, you know, you, you're keeping a bit of part-time work or that sort of thing, then it, it may be worth deferring the state pension. I think you get an increase of 1% in your state pension for every five weeks you defer. You know, it, it can be an option if, if you've got other sources of income. Yes, I because I, I've, I've heard about this and I thought, oh, that's quite nice. And then I think it, it very much depends on, on how long you're planning on living for, basically, you know, if it's going to be worth it. Um, I, you know, if you're if you're healthy and as you say, you're working and you're getting some money in, then I, it sounds like something that would be worth it to me. But if you're 
just thinking, I just want to retire, I want to retire, then yeah, it's it's probably best to get it as soon as you can. Makes me think again um, of, you know, getting some advice when, when you come to retire. I, I, it, it seems to me that even if you've never bothered with financial advice through your life, that one point when you're about to retire, you're thinking of retirement, probably about five years before retirement really, that has to be the time when you go, all right, I'll, I'll spend the money. I'll spend the money on some financial advice now. What, what do you think? I think if you can get this, it, it sounds kind of crazy, but if you can get your state pension right, that gives you your pot of cash for bills and expenses and all your sort of necessary stuff, yeah. which means you can be slightly more flexible with the rest of your retirement income so you can you know take possibly I mean this is going into other areas but you can possibly take a bit more investment risk and, and hope that 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 pot then grows a bit faster I mean lots of people will have 20 or 30 years in retirement so holding it in sort of cash or very low risk assets for that whole time or mm -hmm. even you know with annuity rates which are super low because of low interest rates you know that's not giving you a great return and you have to, you know, you're having to save more and more and more and more to get the same income. So if you can sort of shore up your state pension and then manage all your other bits in a better way, um, I think that's quite good. But you probably will need a financial advisor to help you do that. I should, I just want to jump in there and say, you know, it might some, I don't know, you know, who, who, who's necessarily listening to this. It might feel a bit scary to talk about a financial advisor. It might sound expensive, although often it's not as expensive as it might initially appear. But I would say that to be fair to the government, there is a lot of online resources. And from, um, you know, what I can tell, there's certainly um, a couple at least of government, um, government run organizations that, will give you free advice and will call you and will talk to you. You know, you don't just have to rely on numbers that might not make any sense on, on a page. I mean, I there's, you know, the future pension center. And at any time you can just request your, what does my, what does it look like right now? And you would get that information that we're all talking about. Of, well, where am I at right now in my life? And actually, to be honest, I'm sitting here thinking that's something I should probably do annually just to, you know, check in on it. Um, <laughs> And then there's the Pensions Advisory Service offering free and impartial guidance. And I think we probably shouldn't underestimate being able to talk to a person about this stuff. Yes, because um, they've got that one called Pension Wise. So it, you, you get an actual free session <clears throat> with an advisor at Pension Wise. It's only one. But for some people, that's all you need, frankly. And, and um, you know, it's a, I think it sounds to me like a good idea. It's free. So, you know, why would... Yeah, and as we're saying, it's complicated. Why, why not? Why not just go for that? Absolutely. And I think even if you're paying sort of, you know, however much that, that one-off planning session would cost, I mean, let's say a thousand pounds or whatever, you will almost certainly get that back in terms of your finances will be planned better, just the emotional sort of security that provides I, I think it's you know I think it's really it's really worth it. So what about if you're married or in a civil partnership do things change with the state pension then because they must do surely? It's, it's entirely on your own contributions and your own national insurance record which I guess isn't great for women because they're the ones that tend to take the time out and um, and take on more caring roles. But that's the way it is. And unless you're sort of already in that. So unless you've already retired, really. Uh, yeah, that does sound like a really important point, because that, that would be a significant drop in income. But, you know, if you were going to be retired and there's going to be two of you, he's got maybe better um, state pension than you have. If he then goes, you're going to have quite a drop. So, so that's something that's going to need to be planned for, I would imagine. Yeah, I have to say, when I started looking into this and 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 saw that, um, it really hit home for me. This is a real individual responsibility. Now we can argue as to whether that's a good or a bad thing, but it is the reality. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think maybe you know we all just have to take that individual responsibility and. I think what's what what I'm finding when I look at this information and what we're talking about here, which is it's a bit complex, it's fiddly. 
make sure you have your login. You know, I know that sounds really obvious, but, you know, we all sort of share things in life these days and share calendars and share things online. And it's it struck me, you know, you never know what's going to happen in your life. And of course, we all hope we all live for a nice, long, ripe age with a partner that we really want to be with. But life happens. And it, it, I now realise that that access to my pension details online potentially the lifeline actually um if in the event you know something happens in your life so yeah I really wanted to get across a message in this discussion we're having which is that you know we all each have to have that individual responsibility and know our facts yeah. um tough as it is good point well one thing that I tend to say to people is to go to turn to us you know turn number two us.org.uk it's a, a marvelous website also entitled to.co.uk both of those have benefits calculators and and you can often find if you are retired and you're on a very low income particularly if you're not getting the full state pension which is quite a lot of people then you could find that you um, you qualify for extra help extra pension benefits basically and there are there are all sorts of extra help you can get with housing costs that sort of thing so it it's not the end of the world basically this is what I'm kind of saying it, it's not it's not fun if you haven't got the full amount of national insurance contributions I, I mean frankly even if you have and you're only living on the state pension that to my mind is not a livable wage i don't think that that people should be aiming to to live on the state pension we all need to have extra money but if you are and you're struggling there is extra help around and those two websites turn to us.org.uk and entitled to.co.uk i think it is um they they both have these calculators which are, are really useful so guys what any other um information or thoughts or comments that you have on the state pension whether it, it's you know con contributing to it or being on it anything that you think we need more that we need to know about it i'm, I'm just going to jump in with a big macroeconomic point which we've touched on a bit which is that governments tend to tinker with this stuff and they do it when they need money now given what we've all been through in the last 18 months you know it's the biggest deficit since the war the debt is absolutely massive they will be coming to change pensions in the next few years and then the government after that as well this is you know that debt i mean we just recently had a budget where the debt okay it's going to stabilize but it's next five years it's still going to be about 83 percent of debt to gdp so um if we could you know if i could say anything it's um we i think now more than ever is a really important time to know where you're at know what what's going on and and get yourself up to date regularly with how your pension's looking. Great. How about you, Cherry? Well, I mean, I would, I would say I, I completely agree with that. It's, it's, it's like a bit of, <laughs> it's like a bit of a money pot uh, that you know they just sneak stuff from when they need to go to the sweet shop or whatever. Um, but I think it's still really worth having, and really, you know, it can, it can, it's, it's still sort of nine and a half thousand a year. You know, very few people have sort of guaranteed pensions anymore. And, and so I think, you know, that pot is really worth having. I think, yes, don't make sure it's not your whole thing, uh, but make sure you've got it too. So, you know, check this, you can still do something about it. Excellent. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that's your lot from us today. Thank you, Helen Thomas, CEO of macroeconomic consultancy, Blonde Money, and also Cherry Reynard, who's a freelance financial journalist. Thank you for all that help. Hope that this has given you at least a starter on what the state pension is and how you can get the most from it. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And our handle is, of course, Money Magpie. And you can follow me as well on Twitter at Jasmine and on Instagram at Jasmine Bertels. This episode is sponsored by leading online pension provider PensionBee, which has enabled more than half a million customers to be pension confident by helping them combine their old pensions into one simple online plan. Head to pensionbee.com for more information. I'm Jasmine Bertels. My guests today were Helen Thomas and also Cherry Reynard. The producer was Jenny Bertels. <laughs>